Well, Mr. Gwen, actually, may I call you Jack? I'm trying to be less formal. Mm. This is good stuff. Ah. Well, thank you. Right, so this production has a very short process. We open in two weeks. You know the show? Uh, I have heard of it only by name. Suburban Warfare, an American love story written by a depressed alcoholic somewhere in New York. Of course, it, it ends in bloodshed, as all love stories do. <laughs> this is America, after all. Oh. <laughs> now, we'll happily put you up in a hotel. Okay. Well, actually, I have a rather odd request. Oh? I have what you might call an intense process, so if at all possible, I'd like to live in the facility I'll be working in. Say no more. I am of the belief that an artist should be given whatever they need to succeed, to be nurtured, like a flower, like a pretty little rose, picked only to be put on display in a vase full of dirty sink water and thrown in the receptacle only to blossom later in a dump, surrounded by filth. I'm glad you understand. Oh, I certainly do. Between you and me, I'm just glad to have another professional on board. You know they were going to try to get me to hire an intern for this position? Can you believe that? Well, never fear, I'm here now. And just like you, I believe that there's only certain things in which hardened experiences can help you learn. Exactly. Nobody makes real art anymore. They just want whatever is cheap and easy. Ah, speaking of interns, come in! Jack, I'd like you to meet Eleanor, or Go by Ellie, is that right? Either's fine. I'm really excited to meet you, Mr. Gwynn. I'm a big fan. Don't growl, dear. It's unbecoming. Anyway, Ellie will be your assistant for this production. She'll be there to help you with whatever you need, so please take her with you wherever you go. Well, that's very kind of you. I don't think it'll be necessary. Jack, I insist. Take her. She's good for a laugh. You can teach her some of that experience we were talking about. You know, Mr. Gwynn, I'm really very excited to be working with you. I'm a little bit of a costume designer myself. I have some designs back in a portfolio, a few renderings. I was wondering if maybe sometime after the show, if you had time to flip. But I know your time is very valuable and precious to you, and I'll, I'll be quiet now. That would be lovely. Third This is the costume shop. Is there anything you need, Mr. Gwynn? No. Right. Eleanor, there is one thing. What happens to all the costumes at this theater after productions have finished their run? Well, they normally just go back to the costume loft up behind the stage, up the middle staircase, and if they're rentals... Thank you. Eleanor, one more thing. I'm a professional. I've worked in this industry for many, many years. And in that time, I've developed a, my own process for designing my costumes. I am not to be disturbed for any reason whatsoever. Understood? Of course. I feel like you still don't understand. That includes you. 
You may retrieve measurements from the cast, but other than that, I will have no other use for you. And I'm not to be disturbed for the next two weeks. Yes, sir. You may leave now. George? George, at you? Yeah. It's two in the morning, George. I know. Come to bed. I'll be there in a minute. Get up, George. Get up, George. I'm up. I'm up for the love of God, woman. I am up. You're drunk, George. Don't try to hide it. You're drunk. What will Jane think if she sees you? She won't know. <laughs> she won't know. I'll get in the shower. Just don't let her leave her room.
get drunk, George. Well, I can get drunk too, George. How would you like that? How would you still like me if I was drunk, drunk like you, George? Nobody cares about old George. Old George is another suit and tie. Nobody ever care about George. Martha. Martha, baby, Martha, let me hold you. I remember George. It all seems so long ago. It seems like only yesterday. All of it. All of it? It was all so beautiful. Along came the kids. First Jane and Tucker. Now every day seems like yesterday. What are you saying, George? You know exactly what I'm saying. You know, as well as I do, things haven't been picture perfect since we had the kids. That you good for nothing, right, bitch? Daddy, what are you doing? Why is mommy crying? She's fine, darling. There's nothing to worry about. Just go on back to bed.
Mr. Gwynn? Jack? It has been nine days. Nine days since I've seen a single design. Now I hired you because I thought you were up to the challenge, but clearly I could have been mistaken. Mr. Gwynn? Is he in there? I don't know. Ellie, would you be able to design the costumes for this production? Me? Yes, it could be your big opportunity, your big break. And we have no one else. Three more days. What? I have three more days, then you'll get your designs. Just give me three more days. Fine. Tell me a story. All right. Once upon a time, there lived this farmer. And he lived out in the country, and he had a big farm. He had cows and ducks and chickens and pigs and horses and all those animals that farmers have. And every day he'd get up real early and he'd go out and he'd work. And he'd bring these animals food so that they could eat. These animals needed him. If these animals didn't have him, they wouldn't eat. He didn't think the animals cared much about him. It didn't seem to. All they seemed to care about was surviving. That's all an animal can care about is surviving. You awake? Good, you wouldn't like this next part. One day, old oh man got home after working all day, feeding them animals. And the old man realized these animals are never going to appreciate him because they were animals. Dumb, stupid, senseless animals. So he went upstairs, went to his hall closet. He pulled out his gun. He went down the hill where the animals lived. And he shot them. He shot all them animals. And all his problems went away. That's right. They all went away. Jack, where are my designs? Give me the end of the day. Stop dicking me around. I want a design right now. That's all, Jack. Just present one design, just one. Ah. You can't. And I know you can't. That's the sad part. I never should have hired you. You're fired, Mr. Gwen. What?
fired. I want you out of this theater. Gone. What about the show? What about the costume? Well, I'll get my costumes. Just not from you. From her? Don't you turn your eyes from me. You don't get to fuck me and then turn your eyes from me. I have 14 years of experience in this industry, and what do you have? I'll tell you what you have, you have shit all! You're just an intern, so step back in the line, you little shit. Jack! Jack me. Jack gone. I'm trying to put on a show. But clearly all you're interested in is wasting my time. Pack your things. Get out. You have until the end of the day. George? Mr. Gwen? Come back. Are you little lamb?
Day in and day out, what is a man without love? Answer me! You, who would tear me away from the very thing I was born to create. If you found me hanging above this stage tomorrow, would you mourn or would you scorn the very fabric of my being? I am not some man to be stepped on, stepped over, or stepped around. I am a man you look at when I'm talking to you, so look at me! I am not some old piece of fabric that can be ripped and ripped and stitched back up again. I am a man, nothing more than a man with, pa with passion, and without it, I am nothing. Who do you think you are to tear my passion from me? 